this week's Frank Laverty Prize for top acting goes to um, Michael Schaefer because he was really good. If you go and see it, I think he's the one that will stick in your mind. He certainly stuck in mind. A close second by Rosalie Craig, who's also very, 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 very good. Um, and now my main shtick with this whole thing. Um, it's a very, very good play. Um, let's give it an 8. Let's give it an 8 out of 10 because it was good and it stuck in my mind. 8.5 potentially. Um, but I read a review of it in The Independent. And what happens in the play is it starts off um, with the London Road in Bloom flower competition. Um, and that this is a, an event that's been organised to bring London Road back together. And it opens then, after the murders, it opens in the flower show. And then you dip back in time and you follow the inhabitants of the street that you've met at the flower show. Um, actually, it doesn't start immediately at the flower show, but near as near as damn it um, at the flower show. Definitely after the murders. And then you dip back in time. The murders happen, all the prostitutes go missing, they find out they're murdered, then they find out that the resident of London Road committed the murders, and it all, you know, you follow these individual people that live on London Road, you follow them through, and then you're back to the flower show at the end. It's framed by the flower show. Um, so yes, it ends happily on the flower show, the restorative effect of the London Road in bloom. Flower show, people are happy in this flower show because the prostitutes aren't dying. The Independent Review um, sums up this flower show as a shameful guilt that we're happy again. A shameful guilt that we're, why are people, why, it's not a shameful guilt. It is not a shameful guilt. There's no trace of actors being told, actually your motive for this flower show is shameful guilt. Why would people feel ashamed and guilty that they're happy again. Oh no, all we've had to go through is our, you know, our house prices being pushed down to rock bottom, our whole lives being completely turned upside down by this thing that we've got nothing to do with except we chose by chance to buy a house on this street where a murderer lives. Oh no, all we've done is that and what we've got out of it is a brilliant flower show. <sighs> yeah, there's, you wouldn't feel shameful and guilty for paying the price of murder on your doorstep for the you know the prize of a flower show would you no and that's why the play's not about shameful guilt it's not about shameful guilt but something that i think it could be about is the pressures that the media put on um a group of people the co a collective of people any collective of people the collective of people that are under the under the microscope in this on this particular occasion are the inhabitants of London Road. And this is why I think um, the media plays a big part in this play. When you've found out that the murderer lives on that street, there is a fantastic um, song, uh, cellular material, I think it is, and it's all about Michael Schaefer, my favorite, um, is put up the top in the middle of the stage, top in the middle, um, and he's lit from above and below. So he's got shadows coming down and up, and he looks very powerful. Um, and he delivers this news bulletin, which is is teased into a fantastic, fantastic song. Um, and he, up the top, is media man at the top. The inhabitants of London Road are below him, not lit as well as him. And he has all the power. The main voice in that song is his, talking about cellular material, which is a line in his news report. A news report that he keeps getting wrong beforehand because it's so... Um, momentous and huge and important. News is everything. In the middle of the play, news and media coverage is everything. It's almost forcing one of the couples to move out of their house on London Road. At the end, when everyone is happy again, there is another media presence, a very um, visible media presence. It's not just me searching this out, a very visible media presence. And instead of the, the dominant, middle, top Michael Schaefer character reading his news bulletin, it's Little um, is, is is Rosalie Craig, and she's she's a photographer, a junior photographer for the local weekly paper. So, taking pictures of the flower show, and she has this kind of pathetic voice. On the, there's a there's a song called Everyone Smile, and it's Rosalie Craig as the photographer. It's her line, Everyone Smile, which she delivers. Everyone smile. In the I sung just then. Did you like it? I didn't. Um, she delivers in that kind of stupid voice because she doesn't want to be there. There's a that music comes on, she doesn't dance, she just sits there with her camera wanting to leave and go home. And that's because media isn't as important anymore. But when it is, when media's at full swing, everyone is dominated by it. In the last scene, the Michael Schaefer dominant media man character has morphed into this tiny little kind of 
badly speaking, what an ironic way to say that she's ineloquent, badly speaking. Um, Rosalie Cray character who just snaps away for photos for a little local newspaper. Um, but yes, that's why it, I think that there, there is, what the independent recognises is a transition from unhappiness to happiness. That certainly is there. But I don't think it's there to show, oh, look, the oh, guilty. Look how guilty they are of being happy. It's there for one reason, to depict the kind of real strangling effect that a heavy media presence has on any group of people. Um, in this case, the inhabitants of London Road. Cheers. And, um, <clears throat> and what you do, you get a downsizing of that media effect. It goes from macro to micro. It goes from Schaefer to Craig. I've made this point enough. And I think that's all I should say about it. You should go along to it because it's very good. An 8 out of 10. The um, Frank Laverty Prize goes to Michael Schaefer. I'm sorry if I've been tired today. I feel slightly tired. I shouldn't do this after lunch. I really shouldn't, as you've explained. But I have one more thing to say, and it's not about the play. Um, after my last review, I was, um, which was a beauty queen of Lenan, if you haven't watched it, watch it, because the play's still on until the 3rd of September, which is so long away. You have so many opportunities to see it. I was asked a question, um, I think by someone who lives in the US, because they asked me how is McDonough perceived, the playwright of Lenan, is perceived in the UK. And I, I predicted from, uh, the question asker was from the US, because McDonough's pretty big in the US. Most of McDonough's plays will either start, you know, um, premiere on Broadway, or they'll premiere off Broadway and transfer to Broadway. That happens a lot. Um, whereas in the UK, not every McDonough play gets put on in the fringe, in the London fringe. Um, I know Beauty Queen of Lan is the exception to that rule, of course, because it's done very, very well. It's, uh, you know, the, the jewel in the young vic at the moment being touring around and then coming back. Um, it's done very, very well. But they, they hardly get a run up west, and this is across the, the canon, the oeuvre of uh, McDonough. But, but also, obviously, the UK know that McDonough is pretty good because Lan went huge. And also, another little strange lifting the veil on theatre in the UK. Um, the Little Theatre Guild, I think it is, they publish a list of the most, uh, the most put on, the most produced plays by little theatres. You know, little, like your local theatre, wherever you live, there's probably a local theatre, an amateur dramatics place, that put on proper plays all the time. And McDonough's plays are always so far up the list for the LTG theatres because people know he's good, people like performing their plays, people like to come and see them. So, obviously, the UK knows that McDonough is pretty handy, um, but the West End needs to take a punt, because if the Little Theatre Guild is proving anything to the big boys, it's that people love McDonough, people love to see him, um, because his plays are fantastic. And I would, I would gladly put some money up with someone else and um, put on a production of um, McDonough and the Fringe and see how it goes. You know, something, Cripple, uh, Lieutenant or Skull, one of those, they're all good, aren't they? Um, yeah, so that's how McDonald's perceived in the UK. I hope that slightly answers your question. And I hope the review of uh, London Road, which you should go and see because um, you're lucky anyway, even though it uh, ends very soon. You're, it would have ended about a month ago. They've extended the run already. Um, apologies again for my lethargy. I shouldn't have had that cheese on toast several moments ago, but it was very nice. Um, yeah, have a lovely day. Good afternoon. And thank you.